Okay, so this is my F22B1 head that I'm gonna swap onto my F22B2. Uh, this is the VTAC head. And I went and pulled the 2.2 the VTAC Acura valve cover to go with it. Before I do anything, I've got to actually rebuild this. It was in good shape, but the spark plugs were broke and stuck in it. Valve stem seals and stuff I want to go ahead and change before I put it in the service. what that looks like right now. That's not gorgeous, but it's not the worst thing in the world. The first thing I'm going to do to keep it from getting in the way is remove the VTEC solenoid. It's only a few 10 mil. Now I want to take off the cam gear. It's on the side. I believe that's a 12 millimeter and I'm gonna use an impact. Uh, if you don't use an impact, you could stick a couple like pry bars in the cam gear to keep it from moving. This should slide off like that. The skis on the camshaft. Try not to lose that. That goes to the gear. I'm going to be removing the plastic cover up front. I won't be reusing this and it's melted. It's a 10 millimeter. And that's not supposed to be like that. Go ahead and remove the water outlet. These are 12 millimeter. Now we're going to take the rocker assembly off, alternating outside in. four tens. These are twelve. Bump that around. I've got a rubber mallet that'll work pretty well for this. That works perfect. Just take my rubber mallet and take the handle and that crack and put it in this one. So here's the head, here's the camshaft, here's where the distributor would sit. All of these are your springs in your valves here go all the way across on both sides on this side you have a camshaft seal and where the camshaft gear sits there's that little key slot is facing straight up along with one of the slots on the distributor so 
So I'm just going to do a first clean. I'll spray this down with the brake cleaner and a bucket and uh, run a toothbrush over it. Before I do that, I'm going to see how hard it is to remove these valves and I'm going to get some cardboard to keep them on in order. What we want to do is, this would be the, where the cam gear is, so we're going to draw a giant cam gear. Here. Alright, cam. Now over here is where the distributor is. So I'm just going to put this for distributor. Now, what we can do is when we take these out, these valves out, we'll put them in order on which side they are. And if I want to be extra fancy, I'll put like uh, exhaust EX intake IN. If I had this coming out of a vehicle, I could probably put an arrow that says, uh, you know, front of vehicle, which would be this way. But obviously it's not in a vehicle, so that wouldn't make sense. Let's give this test go a socket. I think these, they recommended a, a little 5.8 spark plug socket, I think this is. And I'm going to use a rubber mallet. All right. This should do nicely. It's got plenty of padding. Just put that up in there. Goes. A keeper spring. There we are. We got our keeper and our spring and our two little tabs. So that worked very well. I can already tell that these valve stem seals are shot. Uh, they are rock hard. So all those will be replaced and I'll get close ups of that. Let's move on to this one. Perfect. side. Got it. And the funny thing is, definitely don't want to do this on the car without something with a magnet in it, because every time these are falling, they're falling down the oil passage, which is good for this case because they're falling on the table. But if it was in the car, you definitely would not want to do that. And I'm going to go ahead and tilt this up. There's under the head, and we're just gonna pop that one out. There's one. Looks decent. Needs some cleaning. So. keep the, you notice there's still a head gasket on the bottom here. I keep the head gasket on the bottom, that way I'll keep it from scratching it. So by the time we get to where we need to be with that, it won't be scratched up. I'm going to go ahead and get a Ziploc bag ready. Two of them, one for exhaust springs and one for intake springs. Yeah, I got myself a couple Ziploc bags. I'm gonna write exhaust on one, intake on the other. We're working on the exhaust side. So I'm going to go ahead and take all the springs and keepers and put them in the exhaust bag. That way they don't get lost. Same thing on, I got to do the intake valves. All right, moving on. Get the 
jeans under the valve. Take my mallet. Here, I'd like to get a close up. Right here, so there's the valve sticking out, that little spot right there uh, is valve stem seal. That's where it seals the oil from going down in the valve, and when those get hard as a rock like these are, the oil can go past them and burn up in the exhaust, and it gets real stinky and lots and lots of smoke. Here's a close up on the last exhaust valve. So push out. You just take your finger, put it behind there, and push down on the valve, and it'll pop them out, and then you can pull them out just like that. Now we're going to do the exact same thing on the intake side. Now you have to remind yourself when you flip it, it's going to be on opposite sides. So now that's the distributor side and this is the cam side. So we need to remember that. Perfect. Okay, so I'm going to take a pair of pliers now and attempt to get the valve seals off. Kind of grab, twist back and forth and lift up. And they come off all. Oh, that's nice. So here's the valve stem seal it took off. And here's one that's still on there. I'm just going to take a pair of pliers and just put them on there. Twist back and forth. And lift up. So you got to give them a twist and pull up. And when you get one, look like this it's hollow on the bottom there's a lot of crud that collects in these grooves right up in here where the valve stem goes the valve stem seal goes hey, you'll need to clean those grooves out before you install new ones these bottom retainers too need to keep track of as well so I'm gonna bag up these retainers same way as I did with the other ones exhaust bottom Intake bottom. Oh, yeah, there's these things. These are your little actuators for your VTEC, if I remember correctly. They have something to do with oil flow. Trying to think of a way to keep those in order. I don't think these have to be. And they are on the intake side, so it shouldn't be too bad. I'm just gonna take my rag and I'll wrap them up in my rag. Okay, I think it's about time for the bucket. I'm just gonna take this. And, wow, this is super light, unbuilt. 
I'm just going to stick it in the bucket. Straight down. And I'm going to hose the hell out of it with a brake cleaner. Okay, let's get started. So, so far this is looking pretty good. It looks a lot better than what mine on the car looks like. Um, so say for instance here's where the fuel injectors would be going and on mine it is just full of carbon. These are looking pretty good. I can actually see through them pretty well. There's still a little bit of carbon. It's not much at all but um, there's still a little bit of carbon build up that I would like to get cleaned out quite a bit. Um, of course, obviously, I'm going to have to go over and get those remaining, get the remaining gaskets uh, from where the intake goes. Won't be too bad. Most of, the, most of the surface is pretty good. Just got around this stud and some here and some here and then this spot where the water jacket is to clean up. And that should be pretty good. The top looks really good. Um, surfaces where the cam sits look really nice. Everything's pretty good. I'll have to get up in here with a pick and clean all these uh, grooves up. I'm going to get in here and clean these as well. On the exhaust side, and it's always going to be smutty. It's the exhaust side. It's not too bad. The bottom doesn't look too bad. There is a couple spots I want to get a pick in and concentrate on, like on here, up in here. Yeah, right here, there's a little bit of carbon around the uh, spots the valves go in. I want to clean that up a bit, yeah, particularly this one and this one. That one's not so bad. This one, though, probably need to clean it too. So I found out how to get these spark plug tubes from looking dull like this to looking shiny like that. I just get myself some jeans, cut off a good piece, and you just kind of give it a scrub. You can either do this, you just kind of scrub it like that, or you can wrap it around it. it should give her a good few turns. That works pretty well. Really cleans them up. I'm wondering between WD-40 and a toothbrush, if I can get a lot of these areas clean. So that seems to work pretty darn well, especially for these harder to reach places.
it looks like most of these are okay. I'd be mainly paranoid about these cylinders, which looks like number three and number four on from the old engine that this head came from. It looks rather rough. gonna attempt to use a drill and a wire wheel to uh, clean up my valves. I've got my generator for my power since I'm out here by the shed van and I've got my eye protection and a work shirt so I don't ruin anything. I'm gonna try to rig the drill up. I don't like uh, clamping the drill trigger down. Of course anything I do I'll be unplugging the drill. I've seen too many people take it off the vise while it's running. I don't like that. I'm gonna zip tie the handle down and then put it in the vise because I feel like that would be safer. I'm gonna start with the worst one which is this one. It looks pretty rough out of all of them. look better than they were but they're not perfect so here's all my valves I don't think they're gonna win any beauty contests but they look a whole heck of a lot better than they did the intake ones look really good these exhaust ones were really really rough but even some of the roughest ones came out looking really decent. So hopefully these should be good. I'm, I've got to go put them on a flat surface and see how straight they are. Okay, so I got my valves cleaned up a pretty decent amount. I'll probably clean up the stem some more. But uh, I'm actually going to get this set up to lap my valves uh, to get these seats and the valve set up and try and see. I don't think I'll need to replace any of these, but this will kind of tell. I got my little suction cup tools and my grinding compound. You can get these at any O'Reilly's or just about any big box store. You'll want some sort of oil uh, to use on the valve stems when you go to do this. And make sure not to put your valve stem seals in yet. There's a cap of oil, so I'm going to try to start on the exhaust side because I'm the intakes or intake valves are perfect, but I'm kind of nervous about the exhaust valve. I'm going to take a little oil and put it onto the stem so it's got something to slide with so I'm not just shoving it in there dry. Okay, got that guy. I can get some grinding compound. A little bit of this stuff goes a long way. I do remember that. And of course, when you first, first puncture it open, it's gonna go everywhere. So we're gonna get a dollop of that out. We won't need too much. 
I'm going to take just a tiny bit. Give her a once around to spread that compound out and then go to town. Just small and just big enough to annoy the shit out of it. We might try something a little different. So I'm gonna get creative because these tools, the valve is just, those exhaust valves would be perfect for intake valves, but the exhaust valves are just too, just big enough to piss you off, just small enough to piss you off. So our creativity comes with a socket driver that has had the handle broken off a long time ago and it fits on a piece of hose and we're going to fit it into the drill and what we're going to do here we can hook this hose onto this valve we'll be able to make this process a whole lot faster and probably get better results So here's a good example of what you're looking for. I've lapped these two exhaust valves and you can see the seats are pretty uniform, shiny. And then here's some that haven't been lapped and they're like really rough. They got pits on the seats and stuff. This is what you're wanting them to look like. And after I get done and I, I think that I'm done lapping a valve, what I'll do, for instance, here's, here's one it's been lapped, you can see on the side, it's nice and uniform and gray shiny. Uh, I'll take one of these and I'll put it in there. And when I put it in there flat, I'll drop it in there where it's completely flat. And then I'll tilt the head up level and I'll take WD-40 and I'll shoot a puddle of WD-40 around it. And if it stays there and it doesn't leak through, like it's not leaking, there's no air bubbles coming through or anything, then I, in my opinion, I'm pretty good. So that's the way that I'm doing it. I'm kind of mixing a, a mixture of what I learned in school versus what I'm just doing on the fly. It seems to be working pretty well. So I'm not too worried about the intake valves. They don't look too bad. I'll probably just do quick passes on those, but these exhausts, this exhaust side looks like hell. So that's what I'm working on. So I'm pretty happy with these so far. These are turning out really good. You can see the difference between those and these. These are really, really nice, smooth, and these are all pitted. Hopefully all of them can look like this. And all my valves have a perfect little 45 on them and are cleaning up really pretty, so the intake won't require much work, but I think this is where most of the work's at, and I'm putting a good amount of time on it. So here's a quick update on the Honda Accord engine head. A whole bunch of stuff has happened and has delayed the project a lot. So I've got it kind of laid out here. I have to keep every once in a while, I'll come out here and brush the cam with oil so that it doesn't rust. The rest of it's been pretty good about not rusting at all. So it's kind of on pause. I've got all my stuff laid out and bagged up and ready to go for when I get back to it. 
that. Yeah, kind of on a delay. We'll get back to it. I'm having to repair the van right now so I can move stuff around and do what I need to do and go pick up wood and whatnot. The project will resume pretty soon, so when it does, I'll start recording on it again. It'll be here on my table and I'll have to keep mopping it down with oil and hope it doesn't rust or anything. It should be able to be good to keep it from rusting with the oil on it. But anyways, thank you for watching and uh, hopefully I'll be able to get back to this Honda Accord and uh, start banging out the engine head and start throwing some paint down soon. That'd be nice.